So how does this actually happen in the neuron? Well, the neuron coming before this one, at the end of its signal, is going to let out something called neurotransmitter, that chemical signal that crosses the synapse. And these chemical signals, we'll draw one here, are going to go over here to the dendrites. And they're going to initiate this process. And so let's say this schematic here is on a dendrite. So what happens is this neurotransmitter goes here to this channel and it turns the channel on. It binds to it. And so we call this a receptor-gated channel because uh, when the neurotransmitter comes and binds to it, it turns the channel on so that then a sodium can go through the channel into the neuron cell and make the cell more positive. So to review, we have the neurotransmitter coming from the previous neuron turning on the ion channel so then the sodium can come through and make the inside more positive. But we want a really strong signal. We want it to be either a lot more positive or just a little bit more positive. With this, each sodium makes it a little more positive. It stays in there for a while and then the sodium eventually goes out. So how do we get this really strong signal? Well, this is where things get interesting because there's actually two types of channels in a neuron. So first, there's these receptor-gated channels, and these are all over kind of the dendrites, this area through here, and the cell body. And so, if a lot of neurotransmitter comes in, it opens up a lot of these receptor-gated channels. And so, sodium comes in from all different places, each one slowly increasing the amount of positive charge inside the neuron. But then, when we get here, where the axon starts is a place called the axon hillock. And right here is a new type of channel called a voltage-gated channel. And what happens is once the inside of the cell gets positive enough, once either a lot of channels have been opened at once, letting in a bunch of sodium, or one channel has been opened in re repeatedly, also letting in a lot of sodium, once that amount of sodium, that positive charge, gets to a certain point, these channels, these voltage gated channels, suddenly open up and let a flood of sodium in. So it's like you get, you're slowly pushing inch by inch up to this point, and then you hit this threshold, and suddenly you're washed, you're flooded with more sodium. You get this huge influx of positive charge. And so there's the first um, voltage gated channel, it's here at the axon hillock, and then every little distance down the axon is another voltage-gated channel. So you open the voltage-gated channel here, you get this flood of positive sodium ions coming in, and that then triggers this next one to open, which triggers another flood of sodium ions. And so the signal flies down the axon, each uh, voltage-gated channel opening after the one before it let in sodium ions, flies down all the way here to the end, where then it can release its neurotransmitter signal. These neurotransmitters are the way that this neuron communicates to the neurons that follow it, telling them whether to turn on or to turn off. Now, different types of neurotransmitters are associated with different types of neurons that are responsible for different processes in the body. And so, one famous one is norepinephrine, also known as adrenaline. And this is involved with the neurons that are part of the fight or flight response. So, when you're under stress, you're being attacked, you're um, having this rush, you turning on these neurons that use norepinephrine or adrenaline as their neurotransmitter. Another neurotransmitter that's often used is dopamine. Dopamine is associated with the pleasure pathways in your brain, or more specifically the anticipation of pleasure. Now here's an interesting thing. If you have too much dopamine in one part of your brain, it leads to schizophrenia. But in a totally different part of the brain, if you have too little, you have Parkinson's disease. Now this becomes especially problematic when you try to treat one of these diseases. For you see, you can treat schizophrenia by giving them um, medicine which will cause them to have less dopamine in their brain. But it affects the whole brain, not just the part that causes schizophrenia. So while you cure schizophrenia, you end up giving symptoms of Parkinson's. Similarly, while you can treat Parkinson's by increasing the amount of dopamine, it can increase a risk of schizophrenia. So treating disorders in the brain is incredibly complex. But now we've seen how the brain, how a single neuron like a cell, can be used as an electrical switch to turn itself on and off using electric potential 
and both receptor gated and then voltage gated channels to shoot down the axon and then send a signal of neurotransmitter to the next neuron telling the next neuron what to do. This is how our bodies communicate movement, how we have breathing, all sorts of functions of our bodies are run by our brain.